I got you, homie. Hey yo, just teleported myself from Win Rescue. I'm Zadon, I'm pro player in Wild Rift, and in today's video I'm gonna show you how to improve in micro and macro. Let's go! What is Micro? Micro in League of Legends stands for mechanics. Your ability to last hit, to kite, to land skill shots, your efficiency at trading, the way you use your summoners and enchantments, and more things. So here I am today to give you some tips how to improve your Micro in League of Legends Wild Rift. Before we start, I have to mention one thing. In League of Legends, any ability that champion has is pretty much similar to other abilities of different champions so there is like a certain pattern if you are good at one champion for example israel then it means if you play another champion with skill shots you will be able to play it properly because israel in my opinion by far the most mechanical champion that regards skill shots so here is the first tip what is the most broken ability in the game? Right, auto attack. That's why you should go to the training mode and improve your target lock selection because auto attack doesn't require anything. No mana, no health. So it's so broken. The only thing you should improve is of course spacing. And here is the tip number two, the spacing. Guys, you have to learn or at least memorize the enemy auto attack range especially for the range champion if you kind of memorize it the tradings like the kiting it's gonna be much much better for you and much much easier because for example if you are playing yone against kaisa mid lane if you know the range of your auto attacks you can you go ahead like you go forward you go backwards forward and back forward and back like doing this movement in this way she can't hit you and you are kind of baiting her you know tip number three improve your skill shots what is the best champion to improve your skill shots on israel because his q skill shot w skill shot e is kind of skill shot and the ultimate is global ultimate so it is a perfect champion you just go to training mode you spam his abilities in random order then you try to hit for example the left dummy while using the second ability on the right dummy and then e on this champion then ulti like outside of the range you know but for that you need to use maybe three hands like three finger claw or maybe four you know so it really depends guys i don't know how many fingers you play but i do play like four fingers four fingers claw so it's much much easier for me to aim the skill shots and hit them and there is another champion irelia you might think why but it is actually very important to understand how irelia e and q r mechanic work because trust me her e mechanic is pretty pretty hard to aim and also q because the q if you auto cast it you are trust me you're a bad irelia player meanwhile if you aim your q then you are a good Irelia player. Same goes for the ultimate. You have to kinda aim it, okay? So, Israel, Irelia, the third champion. 
is that who would have expected it that is pretty hard mechanically and his like shuriken combos you know with the shadows triple double shadow triple shadow it's pretty hard so if you want to improve like your micro in general then you should also practice that in training mode spamming abilities spamming like hurricanes it's just gonna be helpful for you the last champion i would advise zoe because zoe is all around the queue you know you hit the queue you're a good zoe you don't hit the queue you are useless in this way you understand how important it is to hit the skill shot for example, if you play Israel, you can miss your W, but you can hit your Q. Or you miss your Q, but you hit your W. And since the cooldowns are so low, you don't really care. Meanwhile, on Zoe, the Q cooldown is pretty much like 5-4 seconds, right? But it's towards the late game. So if you miss one ability, then you are then you are out of the team fight for what? Almost 5-6 five, six, five, six seconds. 6 seconds in the team fight, it's so much. Oh so yeah, guys, practice your aiming your skill shots in training mode with these champions trust me in no time you're gonna become super rain tip number four it's your micro controlling the map like how good you are how how efficient you are watching the map and controlling it if you never watch the map not a big deal bro even the grandmaster pickers they like they don't even know that map exists but if you are for example diamond or emerald or even gold and you know that map exists congratulations you are better than grandmaster players trust me so guys here is the tip when you play like you should always focus on the minimap and also scroll you know like scroll the minimap with your thumb or if you play like me for fingers claw you can use left claw or even the right claw it's literally up to you but yeah don't forget to watch them up the tip number five the tip number five is for the jungle players guys you should like what is jungling about it's all about clearing your jungle fast and get level five and go to gank right right so how to get the level 5 faster correct clear your jungle properly farm your jungle minions more efficiently and how to do that here is the example you should hit one jungle monster then instantly switch the target and always switch the target between them because your autos are kinda like they have an aoe you know so you don't have to hit the one single monster for the eternity no you should switch one 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 and when someone is low you just leave it and focus on the other one because the other guy i mean the other minion is gonna like eventually die just by autoing you know by the aoe damage so keep it in mind what's up ladies and gentlemen and right now we're gonna discuss about the macro part and we're gonna start with the support role let's go so let's get started support what is the role support all about it's all about like helping your carries right right let's take in consideration like the champion like lulu lulu is a, an enchanter right great with like hyper carries like kaisa jinx this type of champions tristana so what you have to do like macro wise is go to the lane don't like die just let your carry scale and if, and if you can punish you punish if you can't punish okay you just chill out you farm and the most important thing is that supports can also auto attack okay guys you don't need to stay fk just using your skills and watching your adc hitting the minions no you can hit minions too and moreover with the new support item changes like if you last hit minion all the gold is gonna be given to the to your adc and not to yourself so it's so broken you know which means that you are also in charge of the wave management you can actually dictate how the lane goes not only your adc and especially this goes for the solo queue support players when their adc i mean it's a random guy and he kind of have no idea what to do okay then you have the power to set up the lane or just to push or to not to push or make a slow push or just freeze the wave you know you can do a lot of things but but i would suggest you guys if you play support you should always play duo queue 
with your ADC. Just go duo with your ADC and this is the best option, okay? 90% of cases. Unless you play Pike, Rekan, Nautilus, Trash, this type of Giga Chat champions where you kind of don't care about your ADC. Just rotate all the time and yeah. Speaking of Lulu, basically guys, you run from base. Okay, look guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like draw, you know, I'm gonna draw for you so you can understand properly. You take the pink ward level one, okay? You change from the trinket to the pink ward because you are Lulu, you are ranged. And if you are playing against melee champion, level one, he can't really walk up because if he walks up, you just auto him, he loses HP. Melee support like of enemy team is smart. He will not take free damage. So he'll just back off, which means that you can put like your pink ward right here and you can just chill. And in this way, if enemy support rotate and puts the ward inside of the bush you can just freely take it it's 30 gold some xp and it's good for you so yeah what you do you take pink ward you run straight to this bush you put it right on the edge close to your tower so enemy can't like take it because if you put it too far and just take it for free yes trash can maybe for example trash now enemy melee support he can trade some hp just to get this ward and it's worse you know yeah so you put this pink ward and we're talking about lulu after that if you have a chance you just like walk up a bit here if you want if you don't want you don't, you don't need to walk up you just stay there peace chilling you see that uh, enemy like melee champion support is kind of overextending you don't run straight no 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 you just like you back off a little bit and then when he starts to back off then you auto and then you instantly back off because they might be tethering you know like they go ahead backwards they kind of bait you and they go ahead again so you have to understand this little timing you know like this little window when he backs off you auto when he goes again you like run this like little bit of laning phase but we are talking about the macro what is the macro for all the peel supports about it's all about as i said i'm gonna repeat myself helping your hyper carry to farm but there is a but if your hyper carry not a great player and he's just inting and running it down for whatever reason you as a support have to leave this adc alone suffer because he doesn't want to be helped okay he just wants to suffer you leave him alone and you watch your other lanes for example if you want if on top lane and on mid lane you have a carry champions top lane for example camille fiora i don't know Jax. on mid lane you have like yasuo Akali, I don't know, or some ADC mid lane. Okay, then you just go and stick to them. And you do, what's the movement? You go like here, you help your mid lane, take prio, go for the tower if you want, for the plates. If not, okay, then you, then you have to check them up. You check them up, you see that your top laner is kind of winning, he has a lane prio. You rotate there and you be annoying and you get the plates for top lane. And in this way, the fact that your bot lane is completely losing, but at least your team is winning on mid lane and on top lane, which is like this, right? Right. Like because two lanes are winning, one lane is losing, whatever. But that's fine for you. And also you have to remember there is a, another role called jungler. And the jungler can be a supportive jungler, like why Jarvan, you know, this type of champions, or it can be carry as well, Kha'Zix, I don't know like Evelyn, you know, this type of champions. And the and if you have a carry champion in the jungle, then you can also help him to do something. So like you play around top lane, jungle, mid lane. You never go to ADC lane ever again, okay? You literally leave him alone. Because if you stick to there, then what's gonna happen? The lanes are gonna be even here on top lane. Yeah, maybe your top laner is kinda winning, but enemy jungle ganks and your top laner is losing. So let's take like, let's say, like, it's even, okay? So, two lanes are even. Drunk that is kind of FK. And you have a complete disaster in bot lane. So, what, like, what happens in this situation? You're just gonna lose. You're just gonna lose slowly. But, yeah, you're gonna lose. So, if you want to avoid these situations, you have to read them up correctly, okay? It's basically in first three minutes. If in first three minutes in the game... Your ADC runs down and flames your whatever, you just say. Good luck, buddy. 
it was a pleasure you insta mute him and you rotate you just go to rotate what is the support yeah this is you you rotate spot to mid to mid to top and then you play with jungle but there is also one thing guys when you as a support when you base for example you base as a support okay you played on bot lane you base after you go to mid lane okay your first thing to do is go to mid lane and after you decide either to go bot lane or top lane okay remember it and in this case if your adc is inting then yeah good luck have fun bot is not an option you just stick to mid lane and you play with jungle and with the top lane okay perfect and it goes for the all pill supports Janna, nami lulu soraka or whatever this type of champions this works for every single pill support keep it in mind what is for the engage support guys it's pretty simple for example you are playing i don't know reikan nautilus leona this type of champions your support you should hover the bushes you know so like in case someone face checks of the enemy support you can like engage and just punish him otherwise like the early levels you should respect enemies if especially they are like both range but if they have one melee support as well you can like walk up a bit you know you can play around with your adc but yes guys the engage support role is all about what creating space how do you create space for your team exactly you engage you literally press all keys to go in you cc the carries i mean the enemy carries like you try to be annoying as much as you can and in this way you fulfill your job but remember you do not engage if your team can't follow up i understand in solo queue sometimes you do a perfect engage perfect but your teammates just they don't understand that your engage is actually good you know and they'll be like what are you doing what are you doing and you'll be like follow me follow me but unfortunately they don't follow and what to do if you ask me nothing bro happens you gotta learn if you want to play engage support you should play duo with maybe jungler or adc it's fine too or mid laner can be fine too but yes guys the main 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 role is to create space be annoying as hell and you should perma rotate when you have time okay for example like you base you go mid lane as always for the support players then you try to make a play on mid lane if not you go on bot lane if not you can try to go top lane but it depends depends on the champions for example if you have on top lane like fiora or even you know this type of carry champions you for sure need to rotate and help out the guy because if he wins the top lane uh, the 1v1 or at least he gets a lead uh, he will most likely win everything else so if you help about help out a bit your top laner or mid laner the game might be much much easier okay now let's talk about adc all ADCs are in general hyper carries, like more or less, maybe some Ash can be a bit more supportive champion. But overall, you are an AD carry, okay? You are AD carry. So when you play ADC, what's the most important macro for you? First of all, you have to farm safely, you have to be efficient, which means you don't die, you don't lose CS, you don't die to ganks, you have to avoid like this type of weird situation. But if you can't, then well, there are two options. You either improve, you try to read them up better, you improve your micro, or you just change your champion pool. Because an AD carry role is not only about the marksman, you can also play mages in bot lane, such as Zeke, Karma, Organa, Oriana, you know. And these champions don't require you to auto attack, because when you auto on ADC, you have to kinda overextend, right? And if your pacing is kinda garbage, then it means you're gonna run it down every single time, because you just don't know how champion interaction work. So if you know that you are weak, play Zix, bro. You don't need to auto. You just spam abilities like a crazy man. You push waves. No one is gonna punish you. Perma prio, you don't die. You only stay in your safe spot. You are peace chilling, okay? But if you are a great AD carry player who has a good micro, but insanely trash macro, like you have really literally no idea what to do on the map, then listen to me carefully. As I said before, you farm, you scale, you don't die, 
and afterwards when the timer hits around like six seven minutes you got to swap with your mid laner and your mid laner needs to go side lane in this way we have what do we have we have adc on mid lane mid laner on bot lane support adc on mid lane what this like lane assignment grants to us well first of all this helps to this boy in the jungle because now the objectives are pretty close you know for the ad carry who can rotate freely to here or to here in no time which means if enemy team for example they commit to port adc and jungler on end on your mid laner let's take a case that your mid laner dies okay your mid laner dies he goes in base enemy team get this uh, this tower but you your team with adc support you get mid lane the most important tower and then you can set up maybe some objective then you can invade sorry this is the wrong color you can invade you can go top lane get top tower you can get another tower you can do a lot of things you see how many things this lane assignment can give it to you but imagine if your mid laner is good he giga fucking smurfs in bot lane he does like 1v3 or i don't know like he does 1v3 he kills two but dies and like the trade is one for two this is insane and like it literally marks the, the turning point for your team like to actually win because you take over you take mid laner you take i mean you take mid lane tower you take enemy jungle enemy comes you take literally entire map and gg the game is won and yeah this is it for the macro like of adc guys you literally farm you farm you farm you farm you don't die you take your items four items you go mid lane you stay mid lane you don't move to side lane if i ever see my ad carry when the nashor wait, where is the um, uh, let me put the nashor like this color nashor is up and i see my ad ad carry on side lane i i'm gonna I'm gonna eat all of his cakes in the fridge and leave a little piece, you know? And he's gonna cry and I'm gonna be happy. Because he solo lost the entire game just by doing this trash move. Imagine you have a big objectives and your ADC is running side lane. And and you know what enemy ADC does? Enemy AD carry is there because he's a smart boy, you know? He's a smart gentleman. And they're gonna take the Nashor and after you're gonna win. I mean you're gonna lose. And your ADC is gonna keep pushing and flaming and I don't know tilting and he will he will say, Ah, oh, but what's wrong? What's wrong? What did I do wrong? Ah Yeah. Well yeah, this is it for the macro of ADC guys. As you can see, it's giga simple. Farm, stay safe, farm items, go mid lane, help jungler, don't die, game, win LP, become giga chat, don't become giga chat, be inter, up to you. Here comes the top lane. The macro for the top lane is pretty easy, I would say it's like almost as ADC. You farm, you don't lose lane, you don't lose ES, you stay safe. If you are good, okay, you dominate your lane, you call your jungler, you dive your enemy top lane. But if your jungler is damaged, then unlucky, you can't do anything. Then you gotta play around and make sure that you keep your lead and you don't throw it. For example, you are playing Fiora into Jack. Usually Fiora shits on Jacks, okay? Like in almost, uh, I mean, it's 60 to 40, I would say. Maybe some, there are some Jaxes who are pretty good on the matchup and uh, I mean it really depends on the Fiora in my opinion but yeah let's say Fiora into Jax Fiora has a lane prior she is winning her lane Jax is losing what do we have here we have a top lane winning and surprise guys there is no top lane and there is no mid lane without jungler and also support mostly jungler and for example, you are winning your top lane as a Fiora. What your jungle have to do is full clear red, full clear blue and gang top lane, okay? He gang stop. But if your jungle is, is a pretty smart guy and he says, I don't want to gang top lane because why not? Why should I gank? I will just gank my bot lane, you know? Who are giga hard losing. He goes bot lane, he dies with them. Two against three, and the game is over. And meanwhile, you are trying your best win your lane to set up everything and you watch your jungle die and you're like huh? huh i'm so confused so yeah 
If this happens, guys, the best solution is play safer. Make sure that enemy, if enemy jungle gangs you, you don't die, okay? Make sure that you don't die for free. If you wanna like die, then you must kill top laner and then die after to the jungler. If there is this situation. But in general, try to stay safe if you see that your jungler is running it down. Okay? But if your jungler is smart, full red and full blue side, meanwhile enemy jungler, for example, red side comes to the crab. So here is some kind of skirmish. And if you do skirmish, you win because you are Fiora and you have a prio. You should win this 2v2. And after that, you take plates on the tower, you crush the wave, in this wave the Jax Jack, loses the entire wave, you base, you know, you base, take your items and go back again. And this is how you secure your lead. Okay, this is one of the scenarios where your jungler have has actually brain, he uses his brain and he knows what to do. He knows his win conditions. And if he doesn't know his win conditions, then unlucky. Yeah, this is probably, I don't know, the most perfect scenario, guys. But uh, I don't think it will ever happen to you because junglers in solo queues, they never gank top lane. Never. And it's always the enemy jungle who ganks top lane. I don't know why. I don't know why. You tell me. I'm really curious what's wrong with my junglers in solo queue. But yeah. So, if, for example, your jungler doesn't gank, stay safe, bro. Don't die. Stay safe. Okay? Minions. Minions are the most, most precious thing in the League of Legends game. Don't lose wave, don't lose minions. You don't need to kill, bro. Kills don't win the game. Nexus wins the game, okay? You take enemy Nexus, you win the game. Kills will not give you anything. The fact that you get a kill, it's a reward for you playing good. And at the same time, it's a reward that enemy is inting. Because there is no world, if there are two good players, there is a kill, okay? It's only outplay, like little small things. But in a perfect world, there is no kill. Kill, it means that you have made a mistake in something. That's what it means. But kill doesn't mean that you are good. No, no, no. It means that enemy is bad. Enemy did something wrong. So what you have to focus on is minions set up wave correctly and if you play with wave correctly then you might get a kill because you are playing so good that enemy opponent is not understanding okay he doesn't understand what's going on and you, you just win you just win your lane by the wave and do not underestimate the wave so yeah this is a bit of macro for the early game but let's say the game goes to the mid game mid game it's uh Generally speaking, it's when the second Drake comes. When the second Drake spawns. By the time you can still be on top lane, on your lane, or you can swap and you can go here. Meanwhile, ADC support goes here and mid laner takes your place on your lane. So it will be something like this. But this is a competitive setup, okay? It means in tournaments, people play like this. But we are talking about solo queue, so it will never happen, so forget about it. We put mid laner on bot, you stay on top. ADC support here. Oh yeah, this is gonna be most likely the lane setup for, I don't know, for almost every single solo queue game. Maybe there might be cases when the mid laner and actually swap and yeah, sounds like this. So, if the game goes like this, you don't need to do anything, bro. Here you have to only think about pushing wave and try to rotate. Pushing wave, rotate. And one, the most important thing, if you are sure that you can 1v1 enemy champion, then you must know where is enemy jungler. If you see jungler here, okay, good luck, have fun, have fun trying 1v1, green light. But if you don't see no one on the map and you are trying to 1v1, then you are inting. Congratulations. You are a clown. You can't risk. You can't risk. You can't put like on the table 300 gold plus wave plus tower plus plates okay while playing top lane while playing like fiora camilo doesn't matter in general top lane don't risk you don't need to risk don't give up things for free hmm? oh you go only you go for 1v1 only when you have 100 info where is the jungler or if you are giga chat, you are giga chat who can outplay 2v1, okay then. 
you can try. No problem, bro. You can try. And for the late game, this is the most biggest important macro uh, for the top laners. You stay the far away, like the further away from the objective. For example, if here is the Nashor, let me change the color. Here is the Nashor type. What you have to do? You take yourself and you put yourself here. The far, the further away from the objective, okay? I'm not sure if it's like correct. If my English is correct. I hope it's correct. Don't judge me. So you see the distance between you and the objective is pretty far, huh? Yeah, this is how you play. Because in this way, if you're playing like something like Fiora, you do so much pressure like this. You put your enemy top laner under the tower and you're playing here. Enemy team, what they have to do? They either defend you, because if they def if they don't defend you, then you're gonna keep pressuring and you're gonna arrive to the inhibitor. Or maybe eventually even the Nexus. No? So they have to do something with you. And when enemy team do something to stop you, then your team have chance to do the Nashor. Surprise! You win the game just by, by just using one move. Congratulations, you're a great top laner. You're Giga Chat. Good job. But if you don't do this and instead you are inting, staying on top lane, staying on mid lane, farming your ADC wave, being annoying and I don't know, doing something out of the place, then what can I say? What can I say, buddy? No wonder you are Emerald Diamond Heartstack. Improve, buddy. Or there is another scenario. You are playing like Orn champion set, you know, this type of champion who are kind of strong in team fights. Then you have to be on top lane and you put your mid laner, for example, bot side. Hmm? Or if he's a side laner, if it's a side laner champion, if it's not side lane champion, then you just group all mid lane, you stay like monkeys, ooh, ooh, ah. and then you like you four people here, mid laner on top. And what you do is you do this movement. If uh, enemy champion is like sideliner, you do here, here. You go mid bot, mid bot. You let enemy top laner push, so you get the wave right here. You stop it here, you clear it, and you go back to mid lane. Okay? You do this move. If you are a champion for the team fight, but if you are a sideliner, then you just perma split push. And if and if you kill enemy champion, you you like you have two options. You either push tower or join the team fight. Then you have to decide. It's up to you. It literally depends on the situation. But yeah, guys, this is pretty much the macro for every single top laner. As you can see, nothing complicated. It all comes to the map awareness macro. More, I would say, top lane is most like sixty percent about micro. It's how you manage wave how you play around, and 40% is macro, you know, it's pretty simple. Sometimes you rotate, sometimes push, you try to back off, you know, like these little things, but yeah, this is it for the top lane. Okay, now, this is probably one of the most hardest roles in the League of Legends, jungle. The jungle role requires a lot of macro. You have to be really, really smart are not smart then we have a big problems i will give you the beginner guide for every single jungle player okay for every single jungle player. it doesn't matter what champion you play but you have two options first of all what defines a good jungler first of all is jungle gear is he efficient enough to clear his jungle properly gangs uh, objectives and overall, like the map awareness. Okay, let's start from the first one. Jungle clear. Every single time, what I see is junglers, what they do. They do like red, they go raptors, then they go blue, and then they go crab. But they never watch the map. For example, maybe your top laner doesn't have prio, or your mid laner doesn't have prio. And what they do, they go flip the crab and they die. And after they die, they tilt and they say FF, FF, open. My team is garbage, mid laner is dog, uh, my top laner is pig. As they don't rotate, they don't help me. But you are moron. 
can to just watch the the map look your mid laner doesn't have prior and top laner do doesn't have prior it's not because maybe zerba maybe zerba but maybe because of the champion div like for example on mid lane you have i don't know teaser into action how do you take in which world can you have a prior into action there is no world where you can have a prior into action okay even if the action is literally the iron million iron minus million action can probably have prior over the fizz and your jungler is gonna flip the rub meanwhile enemy jungler is smart listen to me carefully what enemy jungler does enemy jungle is giga chad he does crags Columns, red raptors mid and and he goes for the crab he got shot three camps full one one side is full cleared and he goes for the objective because he can see that his mid laner has prior and top laner has prior so it's pretty free you know yes and meanwhile your jungler oh my mid laner doesn't have prior my top laner is empty i dead ff avoid it thank you so now listen to me, what you have to do in order to avoid these situations. First of all, as a jungler, the first thing you do, you have to watch your matchups uh, for the lanes. I mean, you don't, you are not a laner, but at least you have to have idea. That's why I'm saying that jungler, the jungle role is probably one of the hardest. Because you have to know the matchup of every single lane. Or if you, if you don't know, then at least have some small idea how the lane could go, you know? So let's say uh, your mid laner has prior, but your top lane doesn't have prior. Like enemy. Okay, let's put the red for the red side. Top laner has prior, and your mid has prior. Okay? Your jungler. What you have to do, like, with almost every single champion, is you always do like full clear on one side. Okay? And how to do that? You start crags. Then you go red, then you go raptors, then you push this vision. And with this vision, it grants like the vision around here. Then you see where the enemy jungler starts. And if and if you see that the blue buff is still up, then it means that enemy jungler is started from red side. And since, since we said that we don't have prior on top lane, but we have prior on mid lane, we can do two things. You either go for the bot side scuttle, but uh, we have to also consider the bot lane prio. But usually, it's pretty obvious when if bot laners if bot laners uh, have prio or not, because like by minute one, like zero five, you can already see if someone is pushing or like someone is getting pushed. You know, so like it's pretty easy. But meanwhile, the mid lane and top lane are like you need to wait, you need to wait a bit. So let's say your mid laner has prior, top lane doesn't have prior. You have, you know that enemy jungle is on top side. He is on the red side, and his blue is still up. What you can do? Well, you can go for the crab, grab the crab. After that, you can for pick some uh, cheesy ganks on bot lane or mid lane, or you can invade. But be careful. You can invade only if mid laner still has prior. He's not getting ganked by the enemy jungle, okay? Because enemy jungle can move mid, and if your and if he moves mid, then your mid laner has to back off, which means which means your mid laner backs off, okay? Look, this is your mid laner. This is the jungler. He ganks, like it, it's gonna be this situation, and you are here. What do you have to do? Do you still go for invade? No, you don't go for invade, buddy, because. Imagine if your bot lane doesn't have prior, then you're inting. You're literally running it down. And if you die here, trying to get the buff, and then you die, and you press, and you say, FF angle, my, my laners are dog shits, then you are the biggest clown in the world. Because you don't watch them up. So, for every single jungle player, before making any decision, watch them up. Watch them up. For three seconds, okay? Doesn't require too much. Doesn't require too much. Watch them up. You want to invite? You watch mid lane, bot lane. My teammates have prior, I go. My teammates don't have prior, I don't go. Why would you go? Why would you flip? Or, I mean, it's in this situation. For example, or if you see that the jungler is going to invade your buff, because for example, you put the pink word here, no, you can see it. You can see that enemy jungler is here. Okay, then you invite. Then you invite. 
you have to. If you're late. But if you're not late, for example, if you're here and he just like came to do the blue buff, you run mid lane, you take prior with your mid laner together, and then you run here to, to close him. And the enemy jungle have two options. He either backs off or he stays to flip it. And if he flips it, he's most likely gonna lose because you are two people with your mid laner. Meanwhile, enemy mid laner is kind of busy with the wave. And if he drops the waves and goes to help his jungler, then congratulations. You already helped your mid laner to win the lane. Good job, buddy. And here comes 250-50. If you're good with smite, you, you take your objective. I mean, your blue buff. If you are not good, if you are not good enough, it's fine. Happens, but at least you can get the kill, you know. So yeah, as you can see, the jungler macro, the jungle macro is pretty complicated. It's not that easy that you think. Like there are a lot of scenarios that you have to consider. Here, you have to use your brain. So yeah, let's say you take the prior and mid laner doesn't come, then you just go and you close him, he dies, he tilts, and then enemy jungler says FF angle, GGVP, my top laner is useless, my mid laner is trash, he's not rotating, and he tilts, and he flames the entire team, and, and after that mid laner tilts, and two people tilted, which means what? Yeah, you easy win, because they're tilted, easy peasy. So yeah, this is, let's say, for the early game, like, scenarios. But overall, guys, you, you got me, right? Your jungle clear might be. You do frags, red raptors, if you want crap, or just mid lane. This is first one. Or you do cracks, red raptors, wolves, blue, gromp. You can take the crap if it's up. If it's not up, you just base, get items, go bot lane and gank bot lane, or gank mid lane, or gank top lane. It's literally up to you, because items are important. Or if you play Evelyn, you can start blue, gromp, wolves, raptors here. You can, for example, watch the crop if it's possible. If it's not, you just do red, crocs, and then if you have like bot lane prior, you can fight for the crop. You get the crop, you get level 5, you kill them, you get triple kill, you're giga chat, then you base, then you go for top lane, you gank top lane, you kill them, you go again to your jungle because by the time you do the, the, the gank, your blue buff is up, your gromp is up because it's 245 if I... Uh, remember correctly or to 30 or you can do even better if you are smart enough just like the dawn you know you can invade enemy jungle you can invade him i'm not kidding for example you can go here you take enemy raptors you take enemy crocs because enemy crocs respawn at what time three two one answer me jungle reigns oh you don't know no problem bro 235 okay 235 if the jungler starts from the Crags, I mean the golems, they are up at 235. Did you know it? If you know it, good job, buddy. If you didn't know, it's fine. That's why I'm here, helping you out. You go here, you take his crap, I mean his, his camp. And if enemy jungle, for example, is busy, where is he, by the way? He's busy, I don't know, on bot lane, making some cheesy gank, you ping your bot lane. Attention, danger! Danger! Fuck off! Jungler is missing! Jungler is missing! And if they die, no problem! You take entire his red side, then you gank top lane, then you gank mid lane, but if it doesn't happen, then you, you base. You go to your red side, because if, if for example, uh, enemy jungle succeeded the gank and he killed, he has two options. He either go base, he goes base, oh, sorry. he goes base, or he can invade your jungle. And if he invades, he doesn't have resources to fight you anymore, you know? You know what I mean? He doesn't have food flash or something he should 100% not have something i don't know ultimate then you come giga fed with red buff with kills with one item advantage and you just kill him in your jungle and then he 100% tilts rage quits and you win the game uh, okay this is something like for the early game stuff um and let's talk about the mid game for mid game uh, all you have to do is set up the um oh, sorry you have to set up the objectives, okay? One, two, Nashor and Drake. How to set up the objective properly? For example, if Drake is coming, then it means your blue side must, must have been cleared already. It must be free, okay? You have to take all the camps already, and you need to have these camps kinda up. Kinda up, okay? You can clear both of them and set up here, for example. But 
the main reasoning is that you must clear your blue side if you want to go for the drake it must be clear okay because if not then these camps are just staying and wasting time remember yeah it's for mid game it's not early game it's like second drake or drake okay it's not like the first drake because by the by the time when the second drake spawns you have what two maybe two three items and so you clear the jungle so fast that you don't even spend time there yeah so you want to set up drake you clear blue side and you stay with your team you set up like vision here here you know you just be you just play with your team or for example it's like late game it's minute 15 14 or whatever then usher spawns okay then you need to have your red side 100 percent cleared and you just play around this side of the map you just play around here you do stuff here you put the wards and etc and you never as a jungler if i ever see one of my jungler ever again to go fucking side lane just like my adc's eh? for example they are here you know enemy team or group on mid lane look this enemy team the turbo chats and i see my jungler and adc on side lane meanwhile mid, mid lane and support and top lane are here ay 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 Ay, ay, ay. I'm not, I don't want to see it anymore, okay? If I ever see this, FF angle, because it's free nasher for enemy team and GGVP. And then if you're, uh, and if you spam ping to your jungler, what are you doing? And he tells you, uh, like, something like, uh, close your mouth, don't talk to me, or like, peace off. Unlucky. Happens, what can you say? You just mute and you lose game, I don't care. Because he deserves to lose. Trust me, he deserves to lose for this type of gameplay. So yeah, in late game, you never go sideline as a jungler. You always play around objectives, 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 objectives. You play with your team. You farm your jungle, you play with your team. Okay, especially with the support guy. I don't know, maybe I talk much. But I think, I think you should have at least some ideas how to play the jungle now okay so yeah full clear always full clear never go like to shit clear always full clear doesn't matter what side you start i mean the the side start can like differ for example if you want to play for your top lane you can start from red side to full clear into top lane gank or if you want to if you want to play for bot lane then you do blue and red and then bot bot side uh, gank or if you see that enemy jungle is kind of aggressive and he wants to invade you then you need to choose the side that you where you want to start because if you start from the blue side an enemy jungle for example uh he wants to do full red and then invade your blue then but if you start from the blue side then if he comes here he's wasting time congratulations piggy meanwhile you are giga chat already cleared your blue buff i mean blue side you go for the red side you get level five you take the crap and then you wait him to come to his jungle and then you say salam alaikum buddy and you say yeah good luck have fun and then he dies okay yeah this was it for the jungle macro here comes the mid lane my main rule so let's talk about the mid lane boys so the macro for the mid lane it's um, uh, it's not that hard and it's kind of hard but there is a certain pattern, obviously, like for every single role. The mid lane, it really depends on the champions that you play. For example, if you are playing like a weak early game champion, Vygar, Fizz, Yasuo, Yone, you know, an enemy champion have Lucian, like Pantheon, Akshan, what else they, like what, what usually people play. Like this type of champions, yeah, then then you just give up the prior, but you make sure that you clear the wave like right here. You make sure that you don't get a free poke, basically free damage. You just collect wave and that's fine. Even if you lose some of the plates, this is fine. Don't you worry, this is fine. But all you have to do is survive. But if there is like on mid lane, usually it's always a skill matchup. Something like Irelia, Akali, Zed, Yasuo, Yone, you know? Ah, you know, like, it's basic thing. Yeah, and here, here comes the micro. If you are a garbage micro-wise, which means you never hit your abilities, you miss everything. You just don't know what to do with the champion. Then, my boy, I have a solution for you. If you like the champion so much. First of all, you watch my guides for the champions, okay? 
for a specific champions. For that, you gotta subscribe. Moreover, if you are still improving, what you have to do is you don't try to kill enemy. No, no, no. You try to play with wave, okay? You play with wave, which means you last hit. You try, you play for the last hit. You don't try to kill enemy, to hold him, to do damage. No, no, no. You play for the wave. In this way, you will stay safer. You will not put your self in a dangerous position and you will farm you make sure that you farm and once you hit your power spike some like two three items then it doesn't matter what uh, in what order you press all skills most likely you you will be able to kill enemy champion okay because irelia akali are this type of champions like you can struggle early game entirely but then if you hit like three items you can just 1v1 any champion out of nowhere but yeah, macro wise guys, first of all, mid lane is all about the prio because you gotta help your jungler or jungler needs to help to you, you know, it really depends. But usually it's always mid laner who help, who help jungler because junglers are selfish clones who don't care about anyone. But yeah, for that you, you gotta make sure that you watch them up constantly. Guys, for mid lane you have too much, you have to watch them up constantly, constantly. Maybe more than the jungler. Jungler usually, I mean, jungle, jungle players, they watch them up like one time for one century. But mid lane, I have to watch them up every five seconds. You clear the wave, you watch them up. You clear the wave, you watch them up. You clear the wave, you watch them up. Yeah. You have to be always aware of what is going on on the map. And let's, let's take a case. You have a prior on mid lane. What can you do? You can help your jungler. Say crap. Enemy jungle can't take it. He goes here. You go back mid lane. He can base the jungler. Then he can come mid lane. And then he ganks you. And in this way you kill enemy mid laner. You take some plates here. There is one scenario. You have prior. Let's say your jungler is like. I don't know. Yeah, You see guys. As I said before, there is no top lane and there is no mid lane without the jungler. There is always this figure of the jungler. Without jungler, the game is pointless. You always watch what this guy do, what, what this guy does. And if he is anything, you leave him. You never help him, guys. Remember, you never help the anything jungler. Never, never, ever. Because if you help him, you die with him together. And if you die with him together, even if you are a better player, you are better than your opponent. The other side you're gonna lose just because your jungler is a clown and it's your fault that you followed him okay so yeah like be careful about it so yeah what about macro like i would say for the mid lane like most of the times you don't even need to rotate like you only rotate if you have a chance okay Mid laner must be the most selfish person on the map, I would say. You have prior, great. Can you do something? No. You stay here, like you put some words, drop, like you drop some words here, you know, like pixel bush, this bush, upper bush, pixel, or you can put some word in the raptors, the great words to avoid the gangs, to see what's going on the river. You, you are not rotating, obviously. But if you have like chance to actually to actually rotate you know you have chance to rotate then you can push wave you put you drop you always drop this mini i mean this ward you rotate bot i mean but you rotate look at me you rotate until here until this zone because when you come to this zone enemies enemy bot lane might have wards and if they back off instantly oh sorry and if enemy bot lane back off instantly, it means that they have a ward. In this way, you just go again back to mid lane and you peace chilling, farming your wave again. And by this move, you help your bot laners to, get a, to gain a little bit of prior, you know? A little bit of space, a little bit of air. And by this move, you already mid gapping, okay? You are creating a mid difference. Simple move, but little details matter, macro wise. Oh yeah, like, as you can see, if you, if you can rotate, you rotate. If you 
but there is like two sides of that you you can rotate i do rotate no you like you can rotate but is it gonna be efficient for you will you gain something and and if the answer is yes you rotate but if the answer is shady you say no oh, i cba i said i said mid lane i do not care okay okay perfect and yes, uh, the macro for the mid lane is pretty simple. You just farm, you stay on mid lane, you farm your items, you don't die. Try to try to not die to stupid jungle ganks like from these bush, like from these bushes because it's like it's really dumb to like to die to these ganks. But if, if just some junglers are so smart, you know, like they stay behind this wall and then they flash and then they kill you like this. Okay, this is pretty hard to like uh, to predict, but yeah. So for that, for that, you have this word here, you know, here you have like the control of uh, this side. This way you see if jungler is doing this sneaky gank. And if he's not here, then the gen, then the dangerous part is here, you know. And yeah, guys, one part, one most important thing. If you're playing mid lane and if your jungle is top side, you gotta play. You gotta play, for example, this the line you play close to your jungle okay you don't play here on this side no here is the enemy and if they gank you you're dead so you play to this side so if, so if something happens the jungler can help you easily okay and uh, let's talk about the first objectives there. well the first objectives i don't know usually it's better to trade but if your champion is strong then for sure you can just try to win trade but the most important thing is the mid prior guys always push the wave and then rotate push the wave and then fight okay and most of the times the mid lane champions are assassins so what you do you don't need to go first in the team fight nah your adc is gonna do poke some jungler is gonna do poke but you are assassin you, you need to wait you need to be patient oh so just push wave and then rotate okay Mid lane macro for the mid game, the second Drake. By the time you should all you should have already solved with your ADC, you stay in bot lane, you stay against your AD, I mean you stay against your mid lane opponent on bot lane. You peace chill here, and here comes what? Again, the wards, guys, the wards. Wards are pretty important. You got a ward two bushes. You ward this push and you ward like here doesn't matter like the river in general and in this way you avoid the gangs from this side and from here but maybe sometimes you can get ganked here so for that watch your position and put yourself close to this wall you know so if someone ganks you you have a lot of space to escape you to play around so yeah, but in general, you just swap, you stay here, you keep farming, you keep, keep, keep farming, be efficient, don't lose gold, last hit. And if you can 1v1 your enemy opponent, same rule goes for the top lane as for mid lane. You do 1v1 only if you know that the enemy jungle is top side or he's not bot side, okay? And if you are not sure that you're gonna win, then call your jungler to... Like to secure this kill, okay? Because if you get advantaged in 1v1, most likely you won't need any more help from your jungler and you can 1v1 enemy opponents on side lane much, much easier. So here is the mid game macro. And for the late game macro, it's pretty simple. You remember, guys, right? I hope you remember. The top laner goes farther away from the objective. Meanwhile, mid laners go here close to the objective and here is the jungler so yeah this is kind of set up so this is how the map should look like towards the late game when the nasher spawns and if there is a elder then yeah mid laner stays here and top laner stays top pretty easy so as you can see guys mid lane macro is not that hard kind of but you have to always pay attention to minor minor detail because these little details make difference and yeah, improve your micro. And if you are kind of shit with micro, then you have to compensate it with the great macro. Great macro, everything, guys. The timings, the moves, the map. Yeah. This is basically it, guys. If you want to know more things, because it's like, let's say it's... Um, I covered the macro 
part for every single role right now. Maybe not that detailed, not that deep, but these are the main, main, main things that every single player should know about the game and about the macro in general. 